1 minus t2 equals half a. And my third equation was t2 plus fs equals 3 halves a. And my fourth equation is t2 minus fs equals 1 third ma. Oh, what's the m here? Uh, the m is 3 kilograms, right? Oh, so that's going to cancel. So if I put m is 3 kilograms, that's going to be just a. You see? So I have here uh, t2 minus fs is a. So now I want to solve for uh, a, let's say. Okay? So now I combine these two equations, these two equations. I believe you can combine any two and any other two. Because when you do that, if you combine these two, you're going to eliminate the T1. And you're going to combine these two, you're going to eliminate the FS. If you combine the first and the third, no, that's not good. You don't want to do that. Because they don't have anything in common. It's good to do, oh, you, you could do, uh, no, you know what? These two are the best. If you combine these two, you eliminate T1. You combine these two, you eliminate the FS. That's the quickest way, you know. So these two, you'll have uh, 19.6 minus T2 equals to 2.5A. And then combine these two, you'll eliminate the FS. You have 2T2 equals to 3 halves A plus 1, which is... Uh, 5 halves A, right? Which is actually 2 and a half, okay? So then you get uh, T2 is equal to 5 fourths A. And then you substitute that into the T2 from the top. And then you have 19.6 equals uh, 2.5 plus, uh, that's uh, 1.25, 1 1 right? So 3.75A. So you calculate the A. Now, that, that's going to give you the acceleration of the blocks, uh, of, the, of the falling block. The acceleration of the sphere is going to be half of that. You see? So, 19.6 uh, divided by 3.75. A is 5.23 meters per second squared. Acceleration, that's acceleration of the blocks. The acceleration of the sphere is going to equal half of that, 2.61 meters per second squared. Okay? Now, if I want to calculate the final velocity of the block when it hits the ground, let's say the height is 3 meters, uh, 3 meters. So uh, I use kinematics again. V final squared equals 2AD. So the final velocity of the Two times five point two three times three to the power point five. Five point six zero. Oh. So the final velocity of the block, the two kilogram block falling down, is five point six zero oh meters per second. Right. Two times its acceleration of the block times the distance that the block is falling down. Okay, now what's the final velocity of the sphere going to be? 
If you consider just by logic, it should be half of that, right? Because everything is half. This one is connected to the top of that point. So it's the total velocity here equals to half twice the velocity of this. So whatever velocity the two kilogram has should be equal to twice the center of mass velocity of this. So if we do it this way, we can say the final velocity squared of the sphere equals 2a of the sphere times the distance that the sphere is traveling. And then let's erase this here. So you put the acceleration of the sphere, which is half the acceleration of the block, so 2.61, and then you put the distance of the sphere. Now, the distance of the sphere is half the distance that the block went. Because the block went three meters, the sphere doesn't go three meters. The, the block is connected to the top point of the sphere. The top point travels twice the distance that the whole object travels, you see? So again, the distance that the top sphere goes is one and a half meters, not three meters. You put one and a half. Okay? So do two times two point eight oh. which is good, huh? 2.80 meters per second. So it should make sense. It's the velocity of the sphere is half the velocity of the um, block. So that's, this is how to do this problem from a force torque approach. You do the forces on the two kilogram, the torque on the pulley, the torque on the sphere, and the translational motion, the forces on the sphere, then just keep in mind that the acceleration of that is half the acceleration of the block in both the equations. So you need to put it twice, half A, and you need to put it here uh, when we did the torque. Where did I put it there? Um, well, I erased it now. But you need to put it into this equation and into the torque equation. You need to put twice that the fact that the A is the A of the sphere is half the A of the block. Is the sphere rolling? Yeah, it's rolling. Is that because of the Is that what? Because of Yeah, I mean, if, you, if this is too heavy, again, the same issue will come up. If it's too heavy, you might drag this too fast, you know? So the, co the problem, it can ask you if the mu s is uh, let's say 0.6 again, what's the maximum mass that that can be, you know, before this thing just uh, slides? Is that your question? Like you're thinking that the, the top is just going to slide along? Yeah, that's if this is too heavy. So it depends on what the mu s is, and it depends on how heavy that is. If that is, too, uh, is, if that is light, then it could roll, you know. If that is heavy, then there's a possibility that it it's might slide, you see? Now, the situation that I'm doing is where the block is connected to the top point. It doesn't always have to be. You, you could have this kind of situation. You know, you could have the string coming and connected to some pulley on top of another rolling object, you see? Or it could even be like this. It could be connected to the center and wrapped around it. You see what I mean? You could have a sphere wrapping around and then from the center a string comes out like that and then it's rolling like that. That one is a little bit hard to uh, do. Or it would have to be, it would have to be um, maybe a cylinder, you could do a cylinder. But uh, 